Let's take a ballot security tour with Tim Suji, the director of the Forsyth County Board of Elections. Our voting machines are located in our warehouse, which is located in the lower level of the Forsyth County Government Center. The only way to access our storage space is through this service at the elevator, which requires a card ID to be able to access this elevator to the lower level space. We've got cameras located all throughout the building, as well as down here in the lower level space where our voting machines are uh, secured. We also have security cameras inside the warehouse space, um, and so we have 24-7 monitoring of our storage space. We have a keypad code lock, um, and we change that PIN number after every election. So I'm going to unlock the door before every election. We're required by law to test each and every voting machine that we plan to deploy out to the polling places. And essentially we run a mock election where we print test ballots and we scan those ballots through each machine and uh, it generates uh, a, a test result tape um, that has to match the predetermined vote sequence that we come up with before each election. If those test vote patterns do not match up, we'll typically run another test just to, be, just to be certain. And if it fails the second go round, then we take that machine out of commission and we do not use that machine for the upcoming election. Ever since we purchased these new voting machines in 2020, we haven't had a single one to, to fail a logic and accuracy test before each election. One other thing to note, is in addition to the pre-election test that we conduct, we're required by law to conduct a 2% random sampling of a hand-to-eye audit um, or recount, um, where we are physically hand counting the votes from the paper ballots of two randomly selected precincts. And it can, it can include absentee by mail ballots uh, or any ballots from any one of our early voting sites. And so that in itself is sort of a post-election test after the, the election. Um, and so there's a pre-election and a post-election test. We also have a established chain of custody process during the election where the voting equipment is sealed and secured. The chief judges maintain a paper record of those seal numbers as well as the machine count, the number of ballots that they receive, and the, the ballot styles uh, that they're to receive at their specific precinct. Um, and so there's security all throughout the elections process and uh, it's, it's all established by law. Um, these are things that we are required to, to do in order to ensure the security of uh, the ballot. The printer is uh, a thermal printer and the printer is only activated uh, at the end of the night when it's printing the results tapes after the polls is after the polls have closed. Each voting machine is sealed um, with a special seal that has a unique serial number. That serial number is recorded on the chain of custody form that the chief judge maintains. And so when they arrive at their polling place to set up, they'll, the first thing they'll do is verify that serial number. Uh, there's also seals placed inside the voting machine on the, um, the USB media stick that stores the election data. And uh, so there's additional safeguards in place to secure the voting equipment. One additional safeguard to the elections process is the paper ballot in itself. It's the paper stock in terms of the weight and the thickness in the, in the stock itself is unique compared to just a regular sheet of paper. Uh, you'll also notice that the length of the paper is different. And so there, that in itself is, is an added security because the voting tabulator will only accept this particular type of paper ballot. Um, and so if anybody attempted to duplicate the ballot onto a regular sheet of paper, or even on a similarly lengthy, a similarly length paper, um, it still would not feed through the voting tabulator. So that in itself is, is an added safeguard. 
I'm Wesley Young, reporting for the Winston-Salem Journal.